Welcome to Toffee TV. I'm delighted to say I'm joined in the studio by England legend, Evertonian, Wayne Rooney. Hi, mate. Hi, mate. Okay. Thanks very much for coming in. No problem. Good to see you. Good to see you. Talk about your Everton career and many different stages of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, just before we get on to obviously signing for Everton, when did when did you start kicking a footy about? I don't know really, um, as far back as I, I can remember. And um, I was lucky actually because in, in Crocky, where I lived, um, behind my house, to, we had the Gems Youth Club. Yeah. And so behind my house was the pitch, it was like a tarmac pitch. So um, I used to just climb up the fence and I'd be on there on my own for hours and um, just playing. Yeah, and um, out on the streets and, and just enjoying it. I loved it. Yeah. Loved, loved everything about it. So, um, but the first time was probably. I don't know, as far back as I can think. That where you honed all your skills on that time? Yeah, bit. Um, <laughs> a bit. Um, and then obviously, um, used to go out on the streets and all the older lads there. Um, I used to go and play with them. They used to have games and stuff. And um, they let me join in because I was, I was better than me mates who were my age. So right, yeah. I joined in with all the older lads. And um, and then really just went from there. I joined the Copper House when I was, I think, about seven or eight. Um, Joined the Copple House and then you know, obviously Everton. Um, Liverpool, come in, I went for the trial at Liverpool first. Um, Did you? Done one day, um, went in my Everton kit. <laughs> um, done one day and then um, that that night, um, uh, Bob Pellington got in touch from Everton and um, that was it. I didn't go back to Liverpool. But the, any any wide eyes when you walked in with your Everton kit on at, at Liverpool? Um, a few, <laughs> a few, yeah, but it's, it's to be honest, it was the only kit I had. Yeah. <laughs> to be yeah, honest, yeah. so, um, but no, it's I, I didn't really want to go, being honest, and um, but I thought, no, I'll just go if, if Everton. I was I was a bit gutted that Everton hadn't come in well, at yeah, that yeah. time, yeah, because I was doing well, and um, Everton must have found out that I'd gone for the title of Liverpool and stayed away that night. He um, called me dad up, so I went straight into Everton and made up, made up to go there. Yeah, I was buzzing, um, buzzing, and. Um, you know, as a Evertonian, and to, to play for them and be in the academy. I see it now with my lads playing in, in they're obviously in United Academy, but yeah. it was um, just loved every minute of it. Yeah. So you were nine when you signed for Everton, yeah. Right? yeah. I've seen something that this is berserk that in the 95 96 season you scored 114 goals for the under 10s and under 11, which is just uh, less than four <laughs> goals a game. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I, can't <laughs> I used to keep it. I used to have like a sheet on the fridge. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd keep all the games and um, what, the, what the score was, how many goals they scored. My mum's probably still got them, to be yeah. honest. Um, and then yeah, so I can't remember how many goals they scored, but um, yeah, I scored a few. Was it not when you were that age? I don't know whether you necessarily think like this when you were a kid, and I know you did a few years later, but. Did you just think I'm better than everyone at that level, or were you just playing the game and you were just scoring the goals or whatever? Yeah, no, I knew I was a good player. Yeah. Um, but when I was like 11, 12, I never thought you never thought I'd be a professional player, or right. You still so you still were, and then they kept moving me up the age groups. Yeah. Um, so I was playing with the older lads, and um, I just kept improving really, and um, it was probably went until I was about fourteen. 14, 15, where I really kicked on. Yeah. And then, then I started thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play for Everton yeah. for the first team. So, but up until about 14, I, just, I knew I was a good player, but never really thought about playing for the first team. And you, you were a mascot in the, when you were 11. Yeah. At, um, the derby, right? At yeah. Anfield. It was actually, do you remember the game got called off? Yeah, yeah. It was that, it was that game, that. so I was waiting for ages. Um, and then, when it came round, it got called off. The so devastated, yeah, so we got yeah. put back, so we had to wait again. And then we drew 1-1, I think. Um, Gary Speed scored, didn't he? Yeah. Um, the clock, yeah. Drew 1-1, one, one, so um, it was a positive result. I was going to say, that's not... <laughs> given that we didn't have many positive results at <laughs> yeah. Anfield, that's not, that ain't actually a bad one, is it? Uh, okay, obviously, for us as fans, we there was always a, a buzz about you before, obviously, you got into the team. as oh, this kid in the academy, Wayne Rooney. And you... You did it before, like, you know, oh, there's a good good lad mm. in the academy and all, but for you, with you, there was something more. And then I think if, if you first, the first time I certainly heard other people going, oh my God, 
with this kid was Tottenham in the, the FA Youth yeah, Cup. And <clears throat> the two goals you scored that night at White Hart Lane were unbelievable. The free kick that you're in the combat and you smashed yeah. it in. And then the, I like the other one where you you, you just go and chopped in. Just, yeah, and just knock it in. And I think that night everyone was like, oh my God, this kid is unbelievable. Like, yeah, no, to be honest, I think I played in the Youth Cup three times, three years. So I played, yeah, yeah. I played in it when I was 14, 15, and 16. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the Tottenham game, um, the final, the final against Villa. I remember it was um, we finished the game. Then Moisey come in after the game and said, um, "Get a couple of weeks rest, two or three weeks rest." Um, you're doing pre-season with the first team. And I was buzzing, um, so I went to Benidorm. Went <laughs> 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 off to Benidorm for a bit. <laughs> um, come back and then we flew out to France, um, France or Austria. France or Austria, it was. We flew out. Um, to do the pre-season, I was just buzzing. I was just take, it was mad. Like I trained a couple of times with the first team, but I knew that was my chance, and no one was going to get in the way of of that. Obviously, playing with Duncan, you know, players who I grew up, who they my hero, and then yeah, yeah. I'm playing with them, and it was mad. So, um, but I just wanted to take my chance, and no, no one was going to stop me really. I went to I went to Southampton at the end of that the season before, and you were sub. I was That's fuming, so, mate. I was fuming. <laughs> but 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 what was what was mad about that? Obviously, Evan had had to get dispensation to take you out of school and all that, which is which is bizarre when you think about it. But what was it like for you? Because remember, you warmed up, you started warming up, and all of our ends stood up and were singing. You know, yeah. we hadn't even we hadn't even seen you kick a ball in the first yeah. team, and people are singing. You know, what was that like was, for you? It was mad. Um, obviously, we t- I remember going to the, the game. Actually, I was sat next to Mark Pembridge. <laughs> on the bus and then he got me with obviously the old trip with the stadiums there and he's there saying so how far away are we and I'm there like dead young yeah there's the stadium there <laughs> got me with dad and then um, I'm warm up and then we win and win the game I'm thinking if if he would have put me on I would have been the youngest player to ever play for Everton yeah, at yeah. the time and then um, I was fuming he didn't put me on yeah. and then I think after that we had Blackburn the last game of the season and I got called up to the uh, under seventeen Euros with England. Right. Just devastated. Didn't want to go. It was just like because I would have played you want to some be, parts yeah, of my yeah. game where I went. Um so I was devastated with that and um went to the um obviously the Euros with, with England and then starts the pre season. But to be on the bench and be rounded and um it was mad. You remember that I've never told you this before, but I was I was working at Everton at the time and we had Tottenham the first game of the season. And yeah. You come, you come up to the ticket office with your mate, and you had no top on. You're juggling a ball. It was the Friday before the Tottenham game. Your mate was buying tickets, and I'm looking, thinking, I'm gonna be sat in the stand tomorrow, <laughs> and all my hopes are pinned on you. And you're just there juggling a the footy with no top on, and just so natural for you, wasn't it? To just always have the ball, and, and always, just be like, always did, and um... and you went back out after that Spurs game and played footy on the stand. Yeah, you used to always do it <laughs> where Colleen lived. Um... Just like little courtyard garages and yeah. and stuff. So after the games, I'd just go down with my mates and um, just be playing again. Yeah, so it was normal really. When remember after the England game, after my debut for England, um, I'd done the same. Um, I had a France tracksuit on. Um, no, we used to get the Adidas yeah. foot, foot, footy tracksuit, and um, so I used to go there. And um, but then there was a because I played for England, it went massive and. There was a photographer who took a picture of me, it was in the paper. So then people from the FA went up saying, you can't wear a France taxi. <laughs> so then, then there was all like yeah. small changes which yeah, started to yeah. happen, which um, you don't know, you just want to play football. Yeah. But then all the commercial stuff started happening, which obviously I weren't used to and I didn't like really. The, the Just take you back to that Spurs game, obviously the first game of the season, you'd have pre-season and all that, and then you know, you're named in the starting lineup. You become Everton, the second youngest. Yeah. Obviously, you wanted the first, but you become the second youngest player to play for Everton. And what was it? What was it like that day? Were you, were you, can you can you remember? Were you nervous or? Yeah, I remember them. Um, obviously, uh, the day before we worked on the team, and so I knew I was playing. Um, and then um, Moisey said to me, "Don't tell anyone. I don't want the team to get over. Yeah. It's fine." So I went straight home and told my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was playing. It was my cousin's birthday party. Um, that night, so all my family were going to that. So I, I remember um, I went 
into the party, just said hello, whatever, and then yeah. went home. And, and then the morning of, of the game, woke up, I was watching um, Soccer AM, and um, it was just hanging around, really. And I always remember, I went to McDonald's <laughs> in the morning of that game. Did you? Went to McDonald's and got a um, McDonald's breakfast in the morning of the game. <laughs> That's where you know you don't know about food yeah. and, and whatever. Um, got a breakfast and then um, had beans on toast about 12 o'clock and then set off to go to Goodison. And you had an assist, the, you know, the, the first goal of the season you laid it on for. Um, Mark Pendridge. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was mad actually playing on Teddy Sheringham. I can remember they got a corner and I'm like trying to block him, whatever, and I can see him looking at me thinking, who's he? Who's this, this kid here? <laughs> and then I'm snapping at him. And, Calling them all kinds, of, ah, yeah. and I can see him as looking, a kid. Yeah, I can see him looking. It's just to say, it's this. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so it was that was it was mad. It was the whole first few weeks. The, the biggest one was we played at Anfield, um, just moving forward a little bit, mm. and then um, he put me on the bench, and I couldn't cope with me. I went, I snapped. Um, yeah, I remember yeah. snapping at Moisey. Um, I think he, when you look back, he must have been thinking. I must have been horrible to manage because yeah. I just couldn't take it. I had anger issues and remember he left me on the bench against Liverpool and I snapped and I had rocked it at him. Um, whatever. And then I come on and I hit, I hit the bar. I had to, I went through mm. against Chris Kirkland and he battered me hip. My hip was in bits. And but I remember thinking I can't stay down, I've got to get up. Go up and then I hit the crossbar. After the game he hit was all over the place, but was it? I couldn't deal with getting left on the bench. Couldn't show them that you were there. I remember that collision over in by the Annie Road in yeah. the corner, the period under mile an hour, and you just <laughs> bounced back up, and then did nearly win it for us yeah. with that shot. But obviously, you, just to go back, you'd obviously made your debut and had the assist, and it was building, and you wanted you wanted your first goal, and then yeah. Wrexham, we had Wrexham away in the year. Wrexham, we were now world famous because of Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. Um, Wrexham away in the, the League Cup, and. I remember again, just just like a personal thing. Your mum come to the window. Do you getting tickets for yeah. the for the game? And she was like, "You'll score." I was like, "You'll score tomorrow." And she was like, "Yeah, he'll <laughs> score." And obviously, you yeah. Get to, to be honest, much. everyone forgets about that game. I don't. So, <laughs> so everyone's like, "Oh, your first goal against Arsenal," and um, I'm like, "Where?" Well, yeah, first Premier League goal, but I'd scored twice before that. Yeah. In the cup, so um, but yeah, that was just a score for Everton was. Was, was massive yeah. and, um, and then the next thing was I wanted to score well before I was 17 in the Premier League and obviously that came the week before yeah I mean the two I was just like, what, like going back over the Wrexham goal last night the first one was a, a flick off dunk and you, uh, you ran onto it and yeah. chucked it away and then the second one was the become the trademark little drop Stop of the, the shoulder, shoulder and slipped it under the keeper I mean what was that like scoring for I know we'll go back onto it obviously the Arsenal yeah. game but what was it like getting off the mark for the, for the first team yeah, it was just mad. It's what you've dreamt of as a boy, yeah. and um, to to play for Everton was mm. was massive for me. Mates, family, everyone at every game, home and away, and yeah. um, and then to score was just surreal, really. And yeah. it's hard to describe. It's hard to put into words when you you do that, and um, the feeling you get. Life, the affection, the, the noise from the crowd. Yeah. And I know obviously being from Liverpool, being at Evertonian, and I know it's different when you're a local lad and you can feel that from the crowd yeah. more so than some of the foreign players. Mm. But there's a young local lad coming through and um, we've seen it obviously before me with, with with Franny, with different players and, and then after me with um, Tom Davis and Ross Barkley, Barkley and stuff like that. You you can feel that that love from the fans which is which is great. Yeah, I mean it was it, it was amazing. Just one thing before we go on, just the one thing that the I mean it's there, the T shirt's there, like once you blue always you like directly at Franny Jeffers. That was a Franny, yeah. <laughs> then, and when he left I, and didn't, then did, I didn't think I'd be doing I was the gonna same say I was thing. gonna I, I have to address that. Obviously we have to ask about that, but Yeah, no, um, remember that was in the U Cup game. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I was just fuming. End. I was fuming. I and that's why I I understand it when I left the fans uh, Disappointed and angry mm. and upset, whatever. I was the exact same when Franny left. Yeah, yeah. And that was that was aimed at Franny. Yeah, yeah he yeah. was obviously from went to the same school as him. He's from my area. Yeah, know him well, and um, I was fuming. Yeah, 
we'll move, we'll move on. But I didn't have to ask you about it because it was obviously I was I was actually away. I was in Florida and um, phoned home over something. How did they get on the second? You know, Goodison first. I was home for the second leg, and people, oh, did she did she do these t-shirts? And I was just like, no, because obviously it's not like now you'd yeah. have it, wouldn't get instantly. It's like, oh, called it up in his month triple roll, and he's just like, oh, that's right, you've got this amazing play, and he loves yeah. it. A couple of years later, my feelings were probably slightly different towards you, but that's just life. Yeah. Um, moving on, so obviously we get to the Arsenal game, and me and Ped actually done a there was a. We had to do like a little bit of a documentary for the Premier League about that game and about you yeah. actually. We done a while ago. And we were we were talking about it and what was mad that day is obviously you sub, weren't you? And we're playing Arsenal, a fantastic side. Yeah. And took the lead and we get back into it. And then I remember you Moyes put you on with about ten minutes left and the roar around the stadium when you come on. I remember like a couple of the Arsenal players kind of like looking over to the benches of like who's this who's coming yeah. on because it. The, the electricity was unreal. Yeah, I remember watching the game, for, obviously from the bench and warming up and and then I'm watching the clock thinking, oh, he's got to bring me on now, surely he's got to bring me on. <laughs> Were you a yeah. nightmare to manage? Oh, I must be, yeah. <laughs> I don't, now obviously being a manager, I don't yeah. know how I've managed myself now. But, um, yeah, I remember looking at the clock thinking, he's got to bring me on. Mm. And then in my head, I'd already made my mind up when I got on. I'm just, if, any chance I get him shooting, yeah, that was already in my mind. Was it? And obviously, when the ball's gone in the air and I've seen their defence dropping off, mm. my eyes just lit up and knew um, that was my opportunity. And I've caught it perfect, obviously, and it's gone in the top corner. Um, and then that was nuts. That was, that was still to this day, one of the best feelings I've had. Just even when I've scored and ran over t- to the crowd and all the lads, you can see all the players yeah. were buzzing. Um, and then after the game, just in the dressing room, you could say the crowd is still there. Singing. It was amazing. Um, that was the, it's one of my best memories from even as a fan. Obviously, we won the FA Cup in 95, but that's one of my best memories. It just felt like everyone was together. It was in, that day, you was incredible. I mean, that, the goal, I'm sat in the main stand and to see you do that in the last minute. It was unbelievable. The noise was deafening and the noise just never stopped. And then you went, you nearly went and scored an even better. Well, I, I would have said it was even yeah, better. Yeah, you tried to chip him. and chip you and it just <laughs> lands on his, you know, that had they gone in, it would have, you know, I think they'd have probably sold it that night because <laughs> I think everyone would have been in. But it was unbelievable. I remember, like, you, you're right after the game, walking out the ground, it was still, F. Goodison Row was bouncing, everyone singing your name and all that. And it was, I think as a fan, it was like, oh, we, we've got, We've got something special here, and he's one of us. Like I think that was what yeah. it was, you know. No, it, it was. It was. It was mad, and you could see even after the game. Um, I went to me mum and dad were in the the western. Um, and my family were in there, and I, yeah. I went in just to um, say hello, and then I, I left. Then um, they they left the game, um, so I met them in there. Went in, and you could see it the whole pub. Like the pride in the whole pub was was just was, was crazy. Um, so I was in there for a little bit, and then I, I went out again with my mates, and yeah. we were just hanging around on the streets forever. So it was um, <laughs> it was mad. Moyes used to always try and stop me doing it, and Did never. He? But it was that's what you what you done, and that's what got me there. We went, yeah. and he went through doing anything different, and that was my time to obviously have to spend with my mates. I think like that. That's obviously very rare I think mean, that's a I think that's all part of like what what makes you do you know what I mean and what made you is that it it, it is almost that I want to call it innocence without you know I've heard your <laughs> stories about going to Manchester today when you were 12 and having a little bit of a dust up so I'm going to call you innocent but it is that thing of like these are my mates and all right I'm, I'm good at footy but I've just had a game and I'm going back with yeah no and I think it's with obviously the players then would, would after the game they go out or they go into yeah. town or go for food whatever they they do we go there and, and the times we would get we get beers and just on the streets and, <laughs> and have beers and and well that's just obviously how I grew up as well and, yeah. and obviously I don't say it's right or I was underage and, and whatever but that's just how we grew up and, and what we done really so yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, a part of the it world. Just yeah, it just felt yeah. normal. I mean, I, obviously, a lot of a lot of things changed for you after that goal as well. I mean, obviously, you, you had awareness. Everyone was aware then. Yeah. 
think Wenger said some nice stuff about you. And like I said, we were we were obviously made up having one of our own. But going through that season, obviously we get um, there was that goal, and then went to Ellen Road. A couple, of, I think it was two weeks later. And in fact, your dad was stood in front of me, at the, yeah. or sat in front of me there, and. We obviously haven't had them won there for 50 odd years, 51 years, and you come off the bench and send Lucas Ladd to be the chippy and, <laughs> and slot it in. And that end again was unbelievable. It was that amazing picture of you in midair and everyone like jumping. Yeah. And what a, you know, we win the game 1 0, and it was unbelievable. It was, it was mad on, on that. It was, um, if, if you see, and you see where fans have come onto the pitch, mm. so it was about seven of my mates. On the pitch, on the pitch there, was yeah. there, yeah. So, uh, remember after they've scored and then they've ran on. So, as we're all there like that, I realised, I was looking, I was thinking, there's one of my mates there, there's one of my mates there. <laughs> so, it was, uh, it's a good picture, obviously, of yeah, all of us. Yeah. And, um, so, yeah, it was, again, just, uh, it meant everything. Yeah. Every game, every goal meant everything. Um, and, and that's what you get when you're getting a young local lad who, who, who's playing for the club, you and that's how it should be. It means everything to, to play for Everton and score for Everton is um, it's different. It means yeah, it means more. It's, almost. Yeah, it's what you grew up with. It's yeah. part of your life. So, um, to be able to do it, um, for obviously the two years for first was was incredible. Really, we had I, I, this. I was just like looking last night about that first season and the thing that I totally forgot was you won BBC Sports Personality of the Year yeah. in the <laughs> December. Which is, which is obviously sports personality of you, I think it's still going, isn't it, and all that. But the fact that you won it already, was that was a, was that a bit of a mad one as well? It's weird, yeah. yeah. So I'm not, <laughs> I had to go and get a suit, I didn't have a suit. And, um, so I had to go and get a suit and um, Moosey come down me and clean went out and bought a, a dress. I remember the time we had, obviously, I had literally just started getting paid, I think, professional money or, or I don't even know if it no, was just then. before you, it was January when you signed up yeah so um, so didn't have money or nothing so yeah, clean yeah. borrowed money off a, a mum and dad to buy a dress to go mm. down to it with me and then Moisey banned her <laughs> said because she weren't 18 oh. so because we were staying over right. overnight in the hotel so we wouldn't let her go so she was fuming with dad <laughs> yeah and then I just remember like wearing a suit and I think the shirt was a bit tight on my neck so I left the top button undone and I was at chewing gum and just didn't think that it was, <laughs> kid, that yeah. it was wrong. And yeah, I remember yeah. the next day I was getting battered. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> um, but yeah, just all stuff like that, I just weren't comfortable with. No, I'm no, just footballer, yeah. pure footballer. I mean, the goal the, the week later, the winner against Blackburn, brilliant goal, headed it past and slotted in and you win that 2-1 and you got on to it. You were, again, like we were looking to you as the, and it's probably wrong because you were just 17, but we yeah. were, you were, for us, you were that good. I've seen this this thing said before that you do, you knew you were the best player, but I, for you, like how was was that mad? Because obviously you as a you're coming through the academy, you're doing very well, and then you're doing brilliant in the youth cup, and then David Moyes saying, "Oh yeah, we're gonna you come and train with us," and, and so you're still looking at some of them players, thinking, so, "I want to be there." Yeah, the next it, minute, you're the best. It, it <laughs> it's mad how quick it changed. Did it? Yeah. yeah. So it, like for me to go in with. With with Duncan, obviously Stubbsy, um, obviously every, all of them who I've, I've grew up watching and yeah. Mark um, Pembridge, yeah. sometimes you know. <laughs> but to go to, to then go and play with them, um, train with them every day and mm. and play with them, and then so quickly I remember thinking these are crap. <laughs> well, and just think, enough, not yeah. obviously not all of them, but no, but thinking about yeah. some of the players, I was thinking, oh my God, what's going on here? Um, and then. Thinking we need to sign players and we need better players. I remember thinking at that age. At, 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 I think that's the fan coming out of here yeah, and, yeah. as well, where I couldn't believe how, how bad some of them were. And, um, and I remember thinking, um, I'm better than all these players. And um, and that's not a, a disrespect to them players, but some of them just weren't good enough and should never have played for them. Well, I mean, you've some of them. You only went and proved you were better than all of them anyway with what you've done in your career. But at that time, was that, was that a. Was that a mad thing to to? to yeah. It, was it just because in training you, it was just easy for you, or no, did it you wasn't easy? It, yeah. it wasn't easy, but I just remember thinking, thinking the step up would be bigger than what it was. Would yeah. be harder, and um, 
And then I think quite quickly, quite a few, a lot of players in the dressing room were then intimidated by me because I was outgoing, I was I was cheeky, I was whatever. And, and then you could see they were a bit intimidated. And then I was getting, obviously, I was close with Duncan and I was close with Duncan and Stubbsy yeah. as well. So I know certainly Moise didn't like the fact that I was close with Duncan. Didn't he? Moise, I mean, won't get into David Moise too much, but seemed to put it, you know, there was there was issues and there was there was bits where there was bits where like I felt certain just as a fan and, and part of it where like a lot of us were like it's just like holding them back and, and we wanted more and, and we can come back on to that. But I won't ask you about that and more because we at the end of the game we beat West Brom 1-0. One of one of the things that stood out to me, and I, I think I've said this on this loads of times, about like um football now out. Yeah. And I still talk about it now because even when I watch players now in the Premier League, I still think some of them don't have it. But I remember you telling like Kevin Campbell to take the ball to the corner flag in one of the games and yeah. think, and he's there's a you know about being disrespectful to Kev, but he's like he's like a thirty three year old, yeah. and you're a sixteen year old kid telling him what to do. But even in in that game, and you've stood on the ball <laughs> in front of Darren Moore and, and he's tried to well here. I mean, as a kid, I mean. And he come out and said he, he won't get very yeah, far no. if he does that. <laughs> and that's like, um, and I say it now to to my players at, at yeah. Derby and obviously at DC United. Now I say to my players, you need to play with arrogance. Mm. I think it's, and that's not being disrespectful to the opposition, but you can play with that arrogance, which and a confidence, which um, you know brings more area. And, yeah. it, and you see, you see with all the, the top teams, you mm. you can see that, and you can see. Even what you see Man City say, for instance, where they're playing five to Bruyne and Rodri are playing five or six passes. Yeah, yeah. Um, to each other and walking with the ball. That's an arrogance which yeah. to say we're better than you and um, you need to have that. You need to have that belief and confidence. And, and that's what I, I had when I was, I was obviously younger. And um, it's a funny story. Actually, we played West Brom at Man United a few years later. And so Dan Moore played, it was half time. And walking down Tony, he's chased me. Yeah, I've seen him run up behind me. Yeah. I remember looking, thinking, "Oh no, <laughs> he's there coming we go. to me." But he, he come up and I, I don't know where I come from. But I said, I, "I forgive you," and ran off. So I was thinking, it's a bit strange, but I was thinking he's got to come up and try and have it, have it with me. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just a, a belief and a, a confidence. No, it was it was obviously for us it was unbelievable because we're seeing you doing that and we win the game. It was brilliant. Uh, you're talking about that, the, obviously the anger and. And things like that was that was in you, and you got your first red card on Boxing Day at Birmingham City. Yeah. For uh, Steve Vickers, remember him? Yeah. Next time you, you you left one he on. A, he had a naughty cut as well. Did he? All all down. I think he got about fifteen stitches down. Did machine, he? Yeah. Where did I mean, where did that come from? Frustration. It's, yeah, I had a bad touch. I think it was, and um, it's gone too far. And I've just tried to win the ball back and. Um, Did you try to win the ball, or were you just? Yeah, I've lunged, but I've tried to win it. But yeah. and again, it's being a young lad and obviously playing with men. Mm. Um, I've always, I always used to have in my head, I need to protect myself. Did you? Um, yeah. And so any tackle or and you, I'd go in, and sometimes it was a bit wild and mm. and whatever. But um, yeah, it was a bad bad tackle. Like. Did you hit the red? Yeah, I think yeah. it was a right oh, That's fair play if you did your own or nothing saying you deserved it. I didn't know? think so at the time. No, of course, <laughs> no, of course you didn't. Uh, obviously, January signed your first pro contract. And we surprised that, obviously, we had Tony Ibber for, for a bit of moral support there in that thing. But no, I don't think, without being disrespectful to Tony, I don't think anyone wanted to ask him a question. It was all about you. But were you surprised that, one, how much interest there was in that contract signing? And two... Were you surprised that because you got some criticism after that, which I thought was bizarre because you were a seventeen year old, like not long seventeen year old lad that had been dragged out in front of the press and a bit by us because obviously we wanted to say, look, we've signed yeah. you know, we've got him to sign pro contract, whatever. How did you find all of that? Yeah, and again that's that thing where you, when you're young you just want to play football and yeah. and then all the interviews and commercial stuff, I, I weren't comfortable with mm. at all and um, I remember, um, I remember the press conference. She had a big bottle of water, and I just picked it up and started drinking Spreaking the it, bottle. Yeah. And um, so yeah, I was. I weren't used to speaking in front of cameras at the time and doing interviews. So when you look back now, you can laugh at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 
Men bo, jeg, ran, I went to Kongsbo, men uh, det var jo godt sagt, der havde prøvet sådan noget. <laughs> det var jo bare en, der havde bare farvet pejen til, bo. Men uh, I ran, uh, I obviously, de blå til ham, just as a, because he'd not long signed. He'd not long signed, yeah. He sat on the end, he had about five pints before and didn't know and just got told you've got to come and do this. And he sat there and didn't ask the question. No, so put a shoot on and just smile. Human, yeah. Incredible, incredible. Um, and you signed that contract in January, but then you didn't score till Arsenal away in the match. But again, it was another another brilliant goal. And again, I mean, was there, was there ever a goal you scored and you were just happy to score? Because you, you score, a, it was an unbelievable goal at Arsenal. Brilliant goal, bottom corner. You take your top off, throw your shirt on the floor. Like you've got a big cob on again. Because <laughs> um, surely that feeling of scoring for Everton is, is yeah, incredible. It's, it's, that's just your emotion coming out yeah. when you score, and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's you work so hard to try and score, and, yeah. and when it happens, it's just a, a release, release yeah. yeah, it's a release of of everything really, and so um, of course I was happy, and yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you're right. I remember the one at Charlton away, it's the same, it, proper angry, angry. <laughs> it does, in all of them I look angry, but I'm just buzzing, <laughs> I'm just happy, yeah, and I'm just letting all everything out. You just prior to that Arsenal game, you'd obviously made your England debut, and then the, the England game I remember was the Turkey game at, at a stadium of Leighton. As a without like fanboy and so hard, like you know that that feeling of like pure pride of like you led the line that night at Sunderland, and it was the performance was unbelievable, and it was like he's our, you know, he's ours, and it yeah. was it was a. It, it is. It does sound mad to say, but it, it is that like, I mean, I'm sure you've had that as like an Evertonian yeah. as well, and the pride is there of like, yeah. oh, he's one of ours, and look how good he is, and you were tremendous that night against Serhi. Yeah, that was obviously my first start, and mm. um, just played, played the game, and yeah. um, felt at home um, with England, um, felt at that level, and um, yeah, it was. I, I, I felt to play well in the game, and. Um, so yeah, it's a it was a proud moment, but obviously, um, I was gutted until I had a couple of chances, I think, and gutted didn't score. But it was a uh, no, I played well. Yeah, he was super at that night. The finished the obviously finished that season with <coughs> excuse me, finished the season with eight goals and thirty seven games all in, and obviously a lot of them subs and stuff like that. So that's a, that's a really good to be made up with it. A goal scorer like that <laughs> at the moment, um, and then we come back obviously for the next season. And your first goal of the season was the the angry celebration at Charlton with the, yeah. the full the full skinhead. Yeah, you know you'd, you'd already unveiled the skinhead, the crew in a friendly, and it was like this this has been big. This has <laughs> been big, dear. But um, but yeah, I mean that goal at Charlton, the first touch was fantastic, and then reefed the net with the left foot. Yeah, it was. Um, I love that goal. Still one of my favourite goals. Uh, um, the touch and. Um, Obviously, just smashed it in my left foot, and, and again the celebration. Obviously, all the emotions coming out. <laughs> Pure angry. I remember there was a we played Bolton away, I think, in something like the October, and you'd I'm sure you'd gone to do a, a um, advert or something in Spain. There was a bit of a there was a little bit of like thingy about it. Of like should he gone and done it and all that, and we got beat on the sack and you were playing at Bolton. I remember Moyes took it off early on into the second half and like the away, we were fuming in the away end like and uh, you walked off and wellied the bottle of water and sat down and, and there was all of that because you were becoming a bigger a bigger uh, yeah. commodity without being you know <laughs> that's what people were looking yeah. at you were you feeling that those things were beginning to change for you that not that you were out <laughs> not that you were outgrowing I wouldn't say outgrowing Everton but just that with things moving really quick for you off the pitch or not really I, no. was, I think after I played for England then obviously I had time with Nike as well and so commercial there was, there was like little bits of TV advert and, yeah. and stuff you're doing but never really never got in the way of, of me football and, oh no I don't mean I didn't mean yeah, it like that and then, meant... so um, yeah and obviously I, I the player who wants to play every game so yeah. when I did get subbed off or didn't start I weren't happy yeah um, you never showed it to be fair. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, so I was, there was different things which were coming and I was like, and then there's things which I wouldn't have done. Like I'd done a fashion shoot for OK Magazine and I'm in suits and <laughs> jackets and jeans and jackets and stuff. Like you look back now and I think, what am I doing? <laughs> um, but then there's things you do and 
I don't know when I was younger, which we just like, we didn't do that then. But I suppose at that time for you, though, it, it, people are giving you all that stuff and it's like, we think you should do that. You have got to, you have got to build your yeah, profile you, as well. Yeah, but you? I still... You don't look convinced. No, like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not big into my fashion, mate, so uh, I'm a tracksuit and, and whatever, but yeah, and you, you know, I, I remember after this, I've done it. Um, them saying to me, hey, I'm never doing that again. Did you? She didn't like it. Didn't, didn't enjoy it. Like, there's about 10 outfit changes and all that. I'm just like, I'm, I'm not doing that again. No, no time. So, <laughs> Moving forward, we've got this goal here on here, which was a, a goal you scored at Portsmouth in a 2-1 win. And the away kit. Yeah, and the arm up. Again, angry celebration. Yeah, no, that was, <laughs> um, it was a good game there. Um, I always remember that for um, I pushed Steve Stone over. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking, I think I don't know if I was on a yellow or I got a yellow. And um, he's obviously used his experience and he stayed down trying to get me sent off. Yeah, forever, yeah. But I think he'd already been booked. Uh, yeah, because so, I remember, listen, uh, it was. You so know, I think I was lucky not to get yeah, a red yeah. card. Yeah, yeah. They were going on about the red card and uh, scored their own at Leicester, a 3 3 win and a 1 0 win at Birmingham, uh, against Birmingham as well. <clears throat> then going through into the, the new year. You scored two at Southampton. It's the first time you scored two in a Premier League game. Yeah. In a game we were three one up in, and I remember I was there. I had soccer Saturday on. I hadn't gone to Southampton. Yeah. We're winning three one with the radio on. Soccer Saturday and I'm biting me nails, and it's like we're getting in towards the end of the game. They're like, Evan, I've got this one, and then the next minute they get one back, and they end up equalising, and it's a, a three three draw. And and obviously we weren't doing brilliant, but. That day, he scored two two really good goals. That day as yeah. well, I think Dunk scored as well that game. And but you know, first first time getting a brace in a game, feel good. Yeah, um, every goal, um, and then you once you're done two, then up in your head, all you're thinking is can you get a hat trick? Yeah. So um, I didn't obviously I did when I went back to Evan, but um, yeah, but when you're on two goals, that's constantly in your just thinking in your mind. Head, can you get a hat trick? And that would have been. Incredible, really, but we're to be. But yeah, no, it's always great and frustrating, as you said, at the end of the game, not to hold out and, and win the game. But so it, it almost takes away from your goals. I was going to say, does it? The, you knowing the character that you are, was that? Yeah, when you you score and if it's not you know to win the game or to get a late point or whatever yeah. it is, um, it does take away. It takes the shine off it. Some of the, some of the. The buzz you get I mean, after the game normally when you've scored. I remember once last year about the remember we beat Portsmouth at home one nil and you scored the goal the street end and then ran to their fans to celebrate because they've been giving yeah. you some stick. Was that was that a conscious thing? Was that, because you yeah. a natural thing would have been just to run to the Gladys Street. You ended up legging it the uh, Yeah, no, the, I, I remember <laughs> You know, I remember, I remember that. One? I remember doing it, but it must have been they must have been giving me They were giving you something. They were giving me some, yeah. They were giving you a little bit. I remember bit. one because obviously my relationship at the time with Moisey was a bit yeah, frosty. Yeah. There was one, I can't remember what game it was. It might have been Leicester. I scored in the last minute, you know, towards the end of the game. I ran in my family room with one of the boxes. So I ran towards the bench. And Moisey's come out to high five me and I've just blagged him. Just swerved him. <laughs> He's just stood there like that. <laughs> um, and I remember looking back laughing after this, but um, yeah, I'd run off to see my family. But yeah, sometimes you just, the fans are giving you a bit. It's hard to hold it back. I don't, obviously, when I've done it, I could have seen Oh, well, I'm going to ask you about um, that, so just pause, pause <laughs> on that one and we'll have a little. Ch- I didn't mention, sorry, the season before. Remember your left foot of volley against Villa at really, home yeah. the last like the last minute, yeah. and it looked like we were gonna we might get into Europe because we were we just put a yeah. run and we lost. I think you were injured for a cup. We had, we had like no forwards and we ended up just missing out. I think yeah. we stumbled. We had I think we had to beat United on the last day to get in. And we, well, in that game, um, remember playing against United and speaking to Rio before the game. And they'd won the league. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember saying, "Come on, just take it easy." Um, <laughs> Whatever, and they you could see they weren't really, they weren't at it. We took the lead as well. They we went one nil up, and stuff, it? it changed when um, Tommy Gravison he, he volleyed John O'Shea, um, and you could see them switch on. Then. You could see them like switch on, and and the up to five or ten percent, and then obviously we lost um, lost the game. But Back I scored think, a free kick. I think. Yeah, we reversed it, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I remember Tommy, we were saying to him. What are you doing? Like, there's no need for it. And they were yeah. just, they were happy. Going just through to, the motions. Yeah, going through the motions. And 
and then that switched them on, and then they went and won. Yeah, I'm all right. so frustrating. Uh, just back, moving forward again, he scored, we were talking off camera before, but Leicester away, don't got sent off, and uh, <laughs> do, you wanna, do you wanna mention the, the captain's armband story? Or? <laughs> yeah, no, he's fine, he, he dunk went off, and um, he took the armband off and gave it to me, so I remember thinking, right, I'm putting it on. So <laughs> um, I put it on, and I remember going in at half time, Moisey absolutely, Tearing me apart um, <laughs> over it, um, so I can't remember. I don't know if I give it to Stubbsy or whoever it was. Just yeah. take it off nicely and pass it to him, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, was, I was, remember thinking, I, I, all I thought was never fan of. Grew up um, to put the armband on. Yes, yeah, you have it. It's yeah. Unbelievable, yeah. So, um, so put it on, but yeah, Moisey, Moisey didn't. Yeah, definitely. Like it, yeah. And then come out in the second, obviously scored a great goal late on. And I thought we'd, it looked like we'd won. We'd, we'd got right the way through, and they got about six corners at the end. And then Marcus Spence added yeah. literally the last kick, last kick of the game. Yeah, they're the worst ones, mate. When when you concede late on, and <sighs> it's, it's a horrible feeling. Though. Yeah, I thought you'd just done enough. And then your last goal in your first spell was at Leeds again. Followed with another good goal, head to the box strike. Yeah. And I think didn't James Milner score in that one as well. He did, I'm didn't sure. he? Um, he became the younger scorer, didn't he? And that took your. To was that in that game? Didn't he score before that? Oh, was that game, wasn't it? Yeah, that game. Was, was that game? Was it? Yeah. Ends one one. Yeah. yeah. Your goal was a cracker from the edge of the yeah. box as well. Yeah, no, I remember it. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I used to like going to Leeds. Um, the Elm Road was. Uh, there's there's some stadiums which you like going to. There was there in White Hart Lane. Yeah, you like them. Um, I used to like going to as well. So. Um, but yeah, it was, you can feel it, the football yeah, yeah. fans and it, at Leeds, you can feel yeah. the, the passionate crowd, so we used to enjoy going there. We had two good results with you there. I mean, yeah. we, hadn't had, we hadn't had other times, <laughs> but we were all right while you were playing. Yeah. And then obviously, you come to the end of the season and there's the Euros and all that. And there was all, there was obviously stories about a new contract for you and trying to tie him down. And it's going to be, because I, I remember reading something right at the end of the season, it was, and it was, and I don't know whether you've directly said it, but there was a thing of, I want to be the captain of this club. Yeah. So I don't know whether someone's had the conversation and put it or whether it was a But I remember reading that and thinking, I wonder if you're going to be captain next season. And obviously we finished, the, we didn't finish the season brilliantly, yeah. but we, we, and then obviously you go the Euros. And, but before you went the Euros, was there any, was there any kind of indication you were going to leave the football club? Not from my point of view. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I, ideally, I probably would have liked to have stayed another year, mm. probably, and, and see where, where we went from there. But yeah. um, remember before, the, when the season finished, um, um, the club had tried to do a deal with Chelsea for me, without me knowing. And um, but when I found that out, I was fuming. I was, yeah. I was like, why are they trying to sell me? And, um, and obviously, they needed money and financially... We weren't in a great place at the time, but then I remember speaking with my agent saying, well, if they're going to sell me, I'm going to control where I go. Mm. I don't want to go to Chelsea. Yeah. If that's the case. Um, I didn't want to leave at the time, but then um, the, the, once I knew they were trying to sell me then, I um, thought, okay. Um, I went to Barbados after the Euros, broke my foot. Mm. Come back, they wouldn't let me train. Everyone wouldn't let me train in case um, I got injured and they wouldn't be able to sell me. So I um, remember I was there, I was ready to run and they wouldn't let me do it. So um, yeah, it's, I think obviously I've left and I take, I took a lot of um, took a lot of crap over it, um, over leaving. Yeah, but I don't think the club were too innocent as well at the yeah. time. No, I, I know I obviously still working at the time so you're there, stuff, don't you? And... We'll go back to that in a minute, but the Euros, we'll just, we will trouble because yeah. you, you went the Euros and you were unbelievable in the Euros. And I think I think everyone thought England were going to win it. You were, you just seemed to be so at home on that stage. It was almost, I wouldn't say easy for you, but you were very comfortable yeah. playing in that. And Did you have the feeling England were going yeah, to go all the way? Yeah, I unstoppable, I'm being honest, at the time. Yeah. And, um, I, I still think to this day, if I didn't get injured, we would have won it. Um, yeah. So it was, it was, it was mad feeling going to the Euros and you know seeing the, the fans and the the atmosphere and being around some of these superstars if you like and um, 
and then playing with them and the difference in quality to what obviously yeah, used to yeah. eleven and made it easier for you or nice. I felt like I fitted into that environment. So yeah, um, yeah it was unfortunately I obviously got injured and um, we went out but um, no, I loved every minute of the Euros. I think that's the closest they come to winning something with what that when and the side you played in. Um the starting uh, obviously the the World Cup two years later where we, we went out to the quarterfinals on penalties twice. Um, so you didn't stay on the pitch. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that was a red card. Still, I don't know if I've meant to do it or not, but I still don't think it's a red. But isn't that the, wasn't that the tournament where you were injured anyway? Yeah. I seen your documentary and you said you, you come out and kicked the ball and you wrecked your, your groin. Your groin, yeah. And you didn't tell anyone? No. So, um, How can you play football with a wrecked groin? And not I've always anyone? been able to play through through injuries and have you? Um, I've, I've, I've pulled my calves and groin and thigh um, I played um, when I went out to the MLS I played for six months with a big tear in my thigh um, so I just have painkillers and, um, and get on with it really so I've always been able to get through it but yeah so it's not so much the game actually it's more the recovery before it? and after oh, the game okay. it's in agony yeah Disaster. But yeah, so back to the Euros, obviously, the injury. And and there was just there was the the Chelsea story broke while you were away, actually. It was like fifty million to Chelsea and we're like, no way are we no way are we selling the unit. Mm-hmm. The only player we can't sell kind of thing, but it goes on and on and on. And and then for you, was was there just that realisation that there I, I basically well, I'm gone. They were that far down the line with Chelsea, the 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 it's actually they were speaking to Chelsea about me signing for Chelsea and then Chelsea were going to send me on loan to Middlesbrough for a year. So that's how far down the line, the line he was without me even knowing. Why couldn't he send you on loan to Everton <laughs> for a year? So, um, yeah. but yeah, and then it got to a point where it, it, it was going to happen. Yeah. I was going to leave and then the club were obviously to protect themselves. They made me put the transfer request in then. Um, which I said, okay, if that's what's going to take now for me to leave, then no problem. So that's why I done that. I weren't comfortable doing it, but um, that was the only way really um, it was going to happen. Did you? Were you surprised by the stick you got? No, no, no. I, I was expecting it. Yeah. So I knew it was a massive decision. Then, obviously, Everton was my life going up, and loved everything about the club. So for me to leave. Um, I knew what the reaction was going to be, and I get it. That's that's normal. I was, I was, as I said before, I was the same with Franny, and um, so I was, I was, I braced myself for it. I knew what was coming. I knew I would have to, because obviously Manchester's not far, but I knew I would have had to go and live there and and get out the the city for a bit, and um, which I, which it did, and um, it was yeah a big decision from my point of view, and. And a, a risk as well. Yeah, and absolutely. From my point, from my side, as a scout, to go and play for Man United, mm. if it didn't work out, or you know, it was a big risk as well. So, um, was it a hard decision? Yeah, it was horrible. Was it? Um, it was horrible. Cause I remember sitting down with my dad and telling my dad, and my dad was fuming. Was he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My dad didn't want That's me to leave, and yeah. um, so of course it was it was horrible to the realization that. I was going to be leaving the club I grew up supporting and come to the academy and the club I loved I was going to be leaving um, but the circumstances of everything meant that I had no option really. There was, I remember you sitting in the press conference at Old Trafford and saying if Everton would have been higher up the league I wouldn't be sat here today and all that. Yeah there weren't so much that actually it was more the other stuff where Everton wanted to sell me. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was more that really so I was trying to obviously I didn't want to No. It would have looked silly if I come out and start blaming yeah. Everton and um, when I've ultimately in the end I've I've left. So I didn't really want to go that, that way with it. It's still difficult though for it. You you what, eighteen years 18, of age. Yeah. It's a lot to take on your shoulders at eighteen. And obviously we had you know, you come back and you're playing it. I mean what first of all before I get on to the other incident <laughs> was it hard, was it hard coming back to play oh, at Everton? Horrible. Was it horrible, yeah. yeah. And and Anfield, to be fair. Yeah. Um, it got to a point where Fergie said to me, "He's never playing me a good." I seen, I seen the thing. Yeah. Never playing a good. So I feel again, and just I got too emotional. Yeah. Um, 
and it was just like everything walking into the stadium, the warm up, everything like it was weird and um I very rarely play well um, back at Goodison. Um when I come back and um I used to get wound up by the fans and different things and yeah, it was I didn't didn't like it. 2007 April, we're winning two 0 and absolutely cruising. To be fair, it was it was a, the most, one of the most comfortable games against United. And we were unbelievable, and then Ian Turner drops a corner, and it very quickly turns as it can at Goodison, and you score a goal, and then you kiss the badge, yeah. which is, I mean, that's the ultimate like smack in the face for everyone. Yeah, and, and that was again, it's just a reaction to is. As you know, you're probably one of them when Everton were two 0 up. Um, they were they were on me. <laughs> they were on the last three, and it was it was constant. It's just a reaction, and of yeah. course, I, I love Everton. Everton, you know, will always be my club, and yeah. it, it will follow, and my kids follow, and and stuff. But it's, it's just a reaction. Remember after, I think, oh no, why have I done that? Do you regret doing it? Yeah, it, yeah. it's it's um, just happens yeah. again. What like I was saying with the red card. In, in in the World Cup, it just happens, and then you don't even know what's happening. And then it happens, and you think, oh no, why wouldn't I? I probably shouldn't have done yeah, that. Yeah, so um, <laughs> that's just again an, an emotion coming out, and um, that happened. That seemed to happen a lot with me, especially when I was younger. To yeah. do things out of emotion, spontaneous, where it just happens, and then it's almost like your mind goes blank for a few seconds, and. It happened, so I'm, yeah. Off you go with it. And then I think what happened was, you know, it might have been Alex Ferguson not playing yet at Goodison or whatever, but there was definitely like a softening over, I think. I remember the FA Cup final, you were at the FA Cup final and the people, you know, you were saying, oh, I don't want Everton to win or not. And there was almost like, and it was not, it was natural because you'd never told me you weren't saying it just for, for yeah. effect, but I, there was definitely a softening. I remember when we beat United 3 1, Jack Rodwell scored, Gosling, and I remember you played in that. And, you come towards the, the street end and you, you try to cross or something, it went out. And in the past, people had been on you and no one really did yeah. anything. And, and when they read your name out at the start, there wasn't loads of boo. And it did yeah. feel like everyone was just kind of moving on with it. Maybe because Everton were getting better yeah. as well. And that, and that softening had started to take place. And then there was a couple of rumours that in like 2012, 2013, when you were still like, you, you were still unbelievable for United, but things were changing. It was like, Everton won them back and you know, might be able to get them back and all that. And once people started getting the red round that, and then we moved on to Duncan's testimonial and there was a there was a lot of buzz. Yeah. Wayne's gonna play, Wayne's gonna play. And was that a difficult decision to come and play in that? Because, no. 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 And um you have highs and lows, don't you? And for me to come back and play for Everton, um and, and put the, the, the blue kit on again was it was mad and I, like I couldn't wait. Yeah. To be honest, um, and then there was things. I was obviously I've been through a few games. Once I've had kids, um, I, I always wanted to come back and play for Everton. Did yeah. Yeah, I wanted my kids to see me play for Everton. And, um, obviously the FA Cup final. Um, there was a few things. Was they beat United? Everton beat United in the semis. Um, yeah. And then I remember the, the the hardest game I ever played in was the semi final. Was it, yeah? Um, a few years later in the FA Cup. Oh, the 2015. Um, I'm winning that. Remember Martial scored late on and they're all celebrating. I know that didn't celebrate. I had my family in the stands crying. Yeah. Um, so that was that was the the hardest game I ever played in. That was, what was it? It was mad, that one, because I was obviously there, right? I didn't should have won the game. Yeah. <laughs> we met normally Lukaku, but one of them days where he, he just didn't say he missed a penalty, missed chances. He headed one off the line early on, yeah. which he should have really just let go in. <laughs> um, <laughs> and of you know, and, and it was literally the last kick of the game on it. Marshall scored with the last. Yeah, and, um, it, honestly, it was horrible. Yeah. Um, to, to win the game and go to an FA Cup final, um, you should be buzzing. And and I remember the feeling after it was like, like just didn't enjoy it or no. didn't like it and. But um, my cousins, like his little lads, and they just standing crying his eyes out because I haven't, haven't gone through it. Mm. It was a weird feeling, and I think then I was I knew there was over that last couple of years at Man United. There was, I spoke to the club a few times, and there was 
we were trying to get something done um, with me coming back in. Obviously, eventually I did. Um, did come back, but I, I always felt, I think you're probably right, it was about 2012 where I felt oh, I'd love to go back and play seven. It was just, I suppose, just like, look, because we were, we were obviously much better than we were like top five, top six, and it, it didn't feel like such a stretch where a few years earlier it was like, He's been miles too good for us, you know. And, and then, it, and I'm not saying at that time yeah. you were still at your peak. United was still yeah. brilliant. You were still amazing, but it it just sort of felt like we might get a chance. But I guess finances and everything, it, it was difficult. To yeah, get no, back. I think I remember thinking that, and then over that last couple of years um, before I come back, mm. spoke to spoke to the club a couple of times, and um, then Cooman come in, and I remember. Going to meet me, Kuma, his house, and, and then yeah, it all happened then quick. Then when I was back, so it was um, that was, it was mad, but I was buzzing. So there you go. That's the story of how Wayne left Everton the first time. So hear how we rejoined his boyhood club. Make sure you catch part two of our exclusive Wayne Rooney interview. I was signing officially signing the next day, but I'd, I'd everything done the night before, and remember I spoke to Jags and. He put he added me into the lads WhatsApp group, and um, on my WhatsApp it comes up as Jimmy. Everyone in Liverpool calls me Jimmy. Yeah, it comes up as Jimmy. <laughs> um, so I put a message in. I can't remember just saying hi to everyone and whatever. I remember Seamus Coleman thought it was Jimmy Coleman. And I said, mess one them up. <laughs> so Seamus is having a go at me. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day I've got in and getting food next to Seamus. So I said to, him, I don't know, it's a bit harsh. Um, just signed, you're having a go with me already. And he was devastated. He was like, was that really you? <laughs> he was devastated. He thought it was yeah, Jimmy but, um, but yeah, and then um, I, was, I was buzzing to be, to be back and, and I couldn't wait to get going really and started.